I've got a little project for you if you'd like to try making one of these a ballpoint pens that have Celtic rings going through it. It's very inexpensive. Um, the material cost is about 25 cents for the entire pen. If you'd like to take a try at this, here we go with a few steps to get one. Now I'd like to take this piece of maple and cut it into pieces that are nearly square. As close as I can get without measuring. You can see I've done it here and the way I'll do that is to flip it upright like this, loosen my fence, move it over until it bumps, and now my width and thickness are the same. I can go ahead and run this through. I'll probably clamp on a little finger guide right there like that. I'll clamp it and then I can run that through and I don't have to worry about it lifting up and kicking back on. Notice my setup here. I need to split each one of these in the center and I put a little piece of maple right here against my miter and then it gives me proper support and I'm going to come right through and split each of these. Notice I found the center of these smaller pieces of wood and drawn a line down the center and then lettered A, A, B, B, C, C and so on on each one of them. So after they're cut I know which piece is a puzzle matched to the other. Now I'll be using a small miter sled. You can see I have pieces of wood that line up with my table saw. These are at 45 degrees and I'll be placing this smaller piece of wood so I bisect it in the center and I'll be putting another piece of wood here for support as I go through the saw blade. Now I'm attempting to cut these eighth inch black walnut spines and I want them to be all a uniform size. So the method I'm using to do that, as you can see here, I've taken my miter and I have a little block of wood clamped onto it here and I can put my piece of wood right in here, loosen my fence and move it over and tighten my fence again. And when I do that, I'm guaranteed to get the exact same thickness, about an eighth of an inch, each time as I run this through. Next I need to determine how long I need to cut my black walnut spines to go from one side of the diagonal to the other. And it looks like about one and a half inches will do the job. You can see here that I've rigged a temporary 90 degree cut on my sled and marked the one and a half inches that I have to make. Now I need to be really careful because these are little popsicle stick thick pieces of wood and I don't want them getting away from me. So I'll be putting pressure down on both sides of the cut with my fingers. You can see now I have 28 of these small one and a half inch slices and I really only need 20 so I'll have a few to burn if I make mistakes. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue in the black walnut spines and gluing on a diagonal is kind of a tough thing because you can't really clamp it so watch the method I use. I'm going to take and put glue on one side and then put glue on the other side and then after I get that done I'm going to take this piece of black walnut and push it and kind of wiggle it around and you almost get something like liquefaction in an earthquake where it pushes out the bubbles and then I'm going to take it back over here 
making sure I have my letters all lined up properly. I'm going to move it back and forth and kind of squeeze out the bubbles. And then I'm going to make sure that these outer edges of the wood are parallel before I kind of give up the ghost on this and let it dry. Now that looks pretty good. I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'll give it at least a 30 minute dry time before I make the other cut across there. You can see here now I have 10 of these glued up and they're waiting for at least 30 minutes before me I do anything else on this job. You might wonder why do I do 10 of them at a time? Uh, in any job like this the setup is the thing that is time consuming so it takes as long to do one setup for one as for ten. So that um, allows me to end up with a lot of material that I can use over a longer period of time. Well the next thing I'm going to do is shave away this overhang on just one side because I need to be able to put this up against a fence to make a cut across. I have used a coping saw before, a hacksaw, and some hand sanding, but this is a fast, easy way to do it. And you can see that's all I need to get up next to the fence to make a nice cross cut. You can see what I've done now is I've cleaned off that one side and cleaned off the paper that was glued on the bottom. I put a small dot at the center of this piece of wood. I can now slide this on my sled and line that dot up right where my cut's going to be made. And I'll go ahead and take a cut through. And that's exactly what I wanted right there because that's where my next piece is going to go. So now we have this cut piece and what we're going to do is put a little glue on this side. And I like to just use my finger to paint it on. It's water soluble. It comes off nicely later. And then I'll take this small walnut piece and go on both sides. Plenty of glue as a cushion there. Go ahead and take and you can see when I put these together what I really need to concentrate on is lining up this edge, the bottom edge. Go back and forth a little bit. Push everything down and if you push all the bubbles out you're going to have a nice setup. So you can see now all ten of these little puppies are all glued up. I'm going to put them to bed now and let them set overnight and tomorrow we'll finish this project off. So here's what we have after the overnight drying and now we're going to drill a hole coming right through the center here to put it on our arbor. And the arbor is going to be a 5 32nd inch drill bit. So the next part that you're going to need, I got from Drill America. It's kind of a hard to get drill bit. You can see it's 5 32nd inch by 6 inches long. And you can see here it is on the drill press. And I'm going to go ahead and take and run this right through the entire depth until I get down to this little bushing that I got at Ace Hardware going to bump up against that. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this one inch spindle gouge to trim this down and make it into a cylinder. You can see I even left the scrap material on. That won't matter because it's all going to be trimmed down to a cylinder. You can see I, I use this fingernail gouge to come down here and bring this in and also 
from the other side bring this in and then on the other end I did the same thing down here and now I'm going to sand it with um, very fine grit paper because the skew, skew chisel already took it down it's very smooth right now Now we're going to take one of these inexpensive crystal Bic pens. This is about 12 cents a piece. See, so I'll take it and open it. Give it a couple of taps. Breaking the crystal plastic. And I can pull out this. Set it inside here. And we're ready for a test run.